Oi, pessoal, tudo bem? Bom, hoje nós vamos falar uma coisa super importante. E sobre o que vamos falar? Cambly. E Cambly é uma plataforma de inglês online muito, muito, muito boa que você pode encontrar... <risos> Eu tô olhando pro meu pai agora, tá muito engraçado. A gente gravando o anúncio. Sorry, Cambly. É, você pode encontrar Coisa professor... bizarra <risos> está acontecendo aqui. Você pode encontrar professores nativos da língua inglesa de qualquer região do mundo. Não é o máximo, pai? O máximo, Cambly. O Marco Antônio, você fez uma aula. Você gostou? Adorei. É, eu fiz uma aula com uma professora de Dakota do Sul, South Dakota, e muito simpática, adorei. Fiquei assim me sentindo muito confortável. E, pai, você se considera de qual nível de inglês? É, eu sou assim uma pessoa, de um primeiro nível para o segundo, quem sabe, de uma escala de 1 a 10. <risos> não, meu pai ele compreende muito bem inglês, mas ele tem um pouco de dificuldade por não saber tanto vocabulário e tantas coisas assim. E a aula foi boa? A aula foi ótima. A senhora era muito simpática, me contou um pouco da vida dela, eu contei um pouco da minha. E ela te corrigiu? Bastante, bastante. E ela não me deixava às vezes falar, ela fazia eu repetir a palavra três, quatro vezes e dela ela fala assim... Good boy. <risos> a senhora falou good boy. <risos> Sendo que não era uma senhora, porque eu vi o rosto dela. Sim, eu sei. É, uma eu, pessoa eu jovem. Vi, eu, eu achei que ela fosse uma senhora que morasse em Salta Dakota, assim, numa, num chalé nas montanhas, cheio de neve em torno. Eu já fiz toda uma fantasia, mas foi muito bom. <risos> Você gostaria de fazer... Mais uma aula no Cambly? Mais uma, mais duas, sim. Sinceramente, eu gostaria de fazer muitas aulas no Cambly. Você porque... pode fazer, porque a gente tem um código para fazer uma aula de graça. E, Uau! E o código é Inglês no Icru Podcast. Você entra no aplicativo do Cambly ou no site do Cambly e coloca lá direitinho inglês no Icru Podcast. Então, pai, para quem tem medo de falar inglês, para quem está travado e tem vergonha, qual é o seu conselho? Cambly. <risos> Now on with the show. Obrigado, Marco Antônio. <risos> Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of English No Clue High Two. It's so professional right now. <laughs> Perhaps the longest and most improvised Cambly ad. <laughs> Our most improvised Cambly ad. No, but it doesn't mean that it. it's like not true at all, you know? No, no, no. no. It's the opposite. It's very, very positive and... Very true. <laughs> Your dad's uma senhora de South Dakota, <laughs> cheia de neve, <laughs> todo mundo <uma> fantasia. <laughs> yeah. Um, during the last month when we didn't have time or motivation to record some new episodes and I had to look for old episodes with Cambly ads, we have done some crazy Cambly ads. <laughs> last time we were in Portugal, We recorded like seven ads when we were surrounded by cats. <laughs> Do you remember this? In the middle of a small plaza of Alandroal. On the top of a mountain in the middle of hell nowhere, <laughs> central Portugal, <laughs> Alentejo. And there were the there was those baby cats. There were those there baby were cats. The kittens, no? Yeah. Kittens. 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 Stop T sound. Yes. Kittens. Kitten. Kitten. Yeah. Kitten. It's the same sound that you make if you say, like, certain. Certain. <laughs> okay, Lexi, so in the last episode, we were talking about how the level of English here in Portugal is pretty impressive, or at least you are very impressed by it. Like, everyone knows English. Yeah. I would say in Lisbon and Porto. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, Coimbra, I imagine as well. 
like yeah in the cities yeah in the cities so i want to ask you a few questions about that why first of all do you think that occurs because you could make the argument that portuguese people and brazilians you guys speak the same language natively why is their english so much better and not only not much better i would think that why do portuguese have more access to english than brazil yeah in general you want to say portuguese people yeah portuguese people. unless you say the portuguese okay yeah it's difficult when you're talking about like countries the people that live in a country like you could say brazilians americans but then you have some really weird ones Like, we don't say the Spanish, we say Spaniards. A what? Spaniards. Yeah, he's a Spaniard. It's like a dog breed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not in a bad way, no disrespect. No, we Spaniards. love dogs, <laughs> no problem at all, but... I love Spaniards, too. Spaniards. Spaniards are fun. Or Spanish people. You could say Spanish people. There's no version of Spaniards for Portuguese people, though. You just have to say. Portuguese people. <laughs> yeah, or people from Portugal. Okay. You could say the Portuguese are quite reserved, but that sounds very formal and a little bit strange. Okay. Um, so my first point would be that the Portuguese... <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Portuguese people, they have more access to English than Brazilians have. Uh, okay. Access in what sense? In Because schools. In schools. Public, public and private schools. Okay. And here, public schools are very, very, very good. Yeah? Yeah. Have you been sitting in on some public elementary school classes here in Portugal? No, but I've been reading a lot. <laughs> And uh, we took um, um, a kind of Uber here, which is not Uber. Ah, Bolt? Yes, which is amazing. Yeah. So Has those, Bolt arrived in Brazil yet? I don't think so. So those who are coming to Portugal, Bolt is way, way cheaper than Uber and it works amazingly well amazingly amazingly well yeah i like your description yeah so can i tell you my theory uh, no 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 let me finish mine okay so i took a boat and that <laughs> the guy <laughs> if you don't really exaggerate the english l sound boat i uh it boat sounds like is you're i took a boat Peguei um barco. Everybody look at me because I'm peguei um barco. Uh-huh. So, the you, driver... You took a, a car. Yeah. The driver who is Brazilian, um, he was telling my dad and I that he arrived here with his wife and his kid, like four-year-old kid. Mm -hmm. uh, four-year-old kid. Four-year-old kid, a little girl. Uh huh. So this girl, a four-year-old kid, mm -hmm. right? Um, ah, they were looking for a school for her, and here I think it's this almost the same system as in the United States. I'm not sure. Like you had to um, put your kids in a public school from your neighborhood. Yeah. I think it's almost the same. I'm not sure at this point, but they were looking for a public school next to their home and they were super afraid because as you guys know, not all public schools from Brazil are very good. Is that the way it works in Brazil as well? I don't I I think it was supposed to work this way. But for example, um the lady who used to work at our house, mm -hmm. like our mate, she used our address to put her kid in the public school next to her work. Yeah. So. It's a fascinating, that is the way that it still works in the U.S., that depending on where you live, that is 
what determines. It, it happened to you. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. When I was like four or five, no, like six or seven maybe, my parents moved just like 10 minutes down the street so I could go to a better public school, which is, <laughs> I think it's a weird system because, you know, if you have people moving to different places just so their kids can go to one school and then other people want to move there because they want their kids to get a good education, but some people can't afford to go to that place. It's complicated. We see that a lot during the Property Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, this public <laughs> we'll school here on the Property Brothers says. in Portugal, they only pay 50 euros mm -hmm. to... For or to this school? For. For the school, which is her breakfast and lunch. And like everything that involves food and taking care of her besides the teaching moments. Because as a four-year-old kid, you have like a lot of breaks instead of staying in the classroom, right? Yeah. And he was telling me that the food there is very, very good. And he was very impressed that he only pays 50, 50 euros for that. Per year? No, per month. Oh, per month. Yeah. No, it's still good. Yeah, I remember when I was teaching in a public elementary school in Madrid, in Spain, the food was incredible. Like during the breaks... They would bring food for the kids and the teachers. And we would have like Spanish tortilla and empanadas. And <laughs> it was awesome. Yes, because this 15 euro space, like the cookers, no. The cooks. The cooks, um, and paychecks, and the food. And that's it. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So I agree with the food part. But in general, I totally disagree with your perspective that Portuguese people speak much better than Brazilians because of better access and better school. Just because Spanish kids, I was teaching Spanish. Literally, they sent tons. Of, <laughs> the Spanish government sent like thousands of Americans and Canadians to schools all over Spain. You they still do that. I was one of them. <laughs> Maybe that was their first mistake. <laughs> But most Spanish people, most Spaniards, still don't really speak English. But there is another fact here in Portugal that we are knowing that right now, like, it's a very tiny country, right? And all the young people, they don't stay in Portugal. They go to somewhere else to work to study to do to do whatever so if you take as an example luxembourg okay okay so they have a lot of communities there of people from other parts of europe and the third biggest one mm -hmm. is from portugal Interesting. Yeah. Luxembourg is a tiny, tiny country. The It has the best paycheck from all Europe. All the public transportation from is free. From all of Europe. All of Europe. Yeah. Luxembourg has the highest GDP per capita in the world. Yeah. Which so. isn't that high, but I think it's like sixty or $70,000 per year. So maybe it's... Like a combo, you know? The Portuguese have been traveling since whew, 14th, 15th century. And yeah. it's in their blood. They are travelers. They are conquerors. They conquered you guys. And if you want to go conquer some <laughs> foreign land, you should probably learn their language first. And you take United States that, as an example. That is a huge community of Portuguese people in Boston and California. Yeah. And Brazilians. 
Yeah, it might, you understood what it is. So. Yeah. So anyway, Alexia, I have a totally different theory about why Portuguese people speak better than Brazilians, but that is definitely for another episode. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Adeus. Tchau. Beijinhos. Um beijo. Tchau. Oi, pessoal. Obrigada por escutar mais um episódio do Inglês Negro Rádio. Por agora, nós não estamos aceitando novos alunos para o Sound School. Mas, enquanto isso, tem umas coisinhas bem legais que vão te ajudar com seu inglês e que também vão apoiar esse podcast mais amado dos brasileiros. Nós acabamos de lançar o um novo recurso chamado Friday Freebies. A cada sexta-feira, vamos mandar para você um novo recurso que criamos para te ajudar a melhorar cada vez mais o seu inglês e também algumas coisas bem engraçadas como o behind the scenes da gente. Então, para ficar por dentro disso tudo, é só acessar www.inglesnoicru.com barra free, tá? Você também pode entrar na lista de espera do Sound School. E também será o primeiro a saber quando as novas applications serão abertas. Você também pode deixar uma review pra gente, hein? Juro, isso ajuda muito, 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 muito. Tudo isso e mais um pouco no inglês no igru.com. Então vai lá e, como sempre, keep up the good fight and lose well. <música>